So this is our demonstration on how to use the Aqualab. So this is going to tell us our available water um, and therefore give us an indication of uh, it, the uh, susceptibility of that particular sample to grow bacteria and mould. So the first thing we need to do is obviously turn the product on, uh, sorry, turn the machine on. So there's a button at the back and obviously the power button on. Turn it on about five minutes advance so that it uh, has time to come up to temperature and everything's fine. The next thing we have to do is provide uh, the, uh, the machine with a calibration system. So what we do, want to do is we need one of our little testing pots for our Aqualab and uh, into that we're going to put uh, a sample of uh, the calibration liquid. Now we want to choose the calibration liquid that's closest to the product that we're going to be testing. So if I'm going to be testing uh, a bread then that's a high water content and therefore we need to calibrate to a high water content level uh, calibration liquid. Um, if we're doing something very dry like a cracker or a biscuit or a sample of flour then we can use a much lower uh, calibration liquid uh, sample. So to uh, calibrate the machine I'm going to use the little menu button on the far right hand side and it says calibration and I'm going to press the second button along to say yes I want to calibrate it. It says start and I'm going to go yes and then we want to insert a fresh standard into the seal chamber. So I'm going to take my little sample, open it up, empty it into our little container, put it into the sample and lock it and then press the tick button and that's now going to cycle through the uh, testing of that sample to make and we can then alter it. Uh, we would only alter it if the machine doesn't read our 0 0.920. Once the machine has finished its calibration uh, cycle, on the screen will be a change the offset uh, display and what you're doing here is altering the offset on the uh, machine so it reads the same as the uh, calibration sample should do so you simply change that by using the up and down buttons so that it reads the same as the sample and then this simply like a little save button press that and now your machine is calibrated and ready to use for your samples so you can take the sample out that's your calibration sample and then what I have here is my prepared sample, in this case, of uh, a piece of baguette. Um, in, and in here, I've kept the lid on to uh, keep the moisture while I've, while I've been waiting, um, is a sample of both the crumb and the crust in a relative proportion. So there's no point having loads and loads of crust or loads and loads of, of crumb if you want uh, a representative sense representative sample of the whole. You can do the crust and the crumb separately uh, if you wish to um, but what I've done here is do a representative sample so I've got crumb and crust. Very important that you don't overfill the container. You only want it crumbled up uh, to a maximum of halfway up the sample container. Then put the sample in, lock it in place I'm going to start the test and as soon as you lock it will start the measurement process. So when the test is finished running you'll hear a little beep so beep 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 
and that will indicate that the test has finished um, and then you can read the measurement on the screen. So for example uh, this particular uh, sample is reading 0 0.9190 AW at 25.04 degrees C. Now it's very important that you record both figures. AW is affected by temperature. So it's AW at degrees C, not purely AW. And that's really important. So record both of those figures. Now, if you're doing this for a scientific test, for a report, or for your dissertation, then you would be doing each sample, um, so each loaf or each um, dough piece or each cracker, whatever it is, at least three times to then build up an average, which you would then put into your report. Okay? So my 0 0.910, I can then look at my indicator card, which puts the uh, product into this second tier. Uh, so general foods within this range, some cheeses, uh, cured meat, bread, obviously, which is what we've got in there, and tortillas. Uh, and that means it's susceptible to things like salmonella, uh, clostridium botulinum, lactobacillus, and some mould and yeast. So our sample's finished, so we will remove it. Now, when we're getting rid of the samples that we've tested, we empty them out, we wash the, uh, the little containers and lids, and then we put them onto uh, the side of the draining board to dry. These are quite expensive, we do not want to throw them into the bin for our classwork. Okay? And again, if we wanted to, te to test our next sample, so we take our next sample that we've pre-prepared, again, pop it straight in, put in, lock down, and that will automatically start the uh, testing process.